We're here in the House chamber, the largest chamber in the Minnesota State Capitol. It accommodates all 134 representatives as well as joint sessions uh, like the Governor's State of the State Address. There are many unique features to this space, but I'd like to start with Minnesota, the spirit of government, which is the statuary above the speaker's desk. I understand it's not original. What's the story? Yeah, if you were here in 1905 and sitting in the gallery seats where we are, right above us here, you probably would have had people looking back at you because that whole archway was open with about oh, just over 200 gallery seats. So it was public gallery viewing space to watch the house in session. And then, uh, as it is the case in most capitals, government expands, staffing needs are greater, and so they need more office spaces. So they took out the uh, gallery seats and put another floor of off, two floors of office space for the house staff to work there. So then that gave them a reason to decorate that front wall because now you have this big space that needs some decoration. So they created a statue uh, done by St. Paul uh, plasterers and artists Carlo and Amerigo Brioschi. And they wanted to represent the spirit of government. That's the figure at the top most, the female figure with the star. So she's Minnesota. And so you have dates of 1849, 1858 inscribed in the book that she holds open. And then there's also, uh, because we were part of the Louisiana Purchase in 1803, everything west of the Mississippi River was part of that purchase. And so the artist wanted to commemorate the, the role of Lewis and Clark in our, in our pre-state history. So the woman who was seated, the American Indian woman, is Sacagawea, who was a guide who led Lewis and Clark. The other Native American man is a, just a person they would have encountered or would have helped them on the expedition. And then on the far right are not Lewis and Clark, but it's uh, French explorers and voyageurs who were the first Europeans who came into Minnesota. So what they were doing is they were making that connection to the existing stencil work that you have in the ceiling where you have names of Hennepin, Duluth, LaSalle, Perot, who were also those same contemporary uh, French explorers and fur traders that were here, you know. So it's honoring the whole, s the entire history of the state, even pre-statehood. Right, yeah, and that's, that's the connection. It's, you know, going back to the 1680s up to the 1800s and then eventual statehood. Behind the speaker's desk is a portrait of Abraham Lincoln. First, why is there a portrait of Abraham Lincoln? It wasn't part of the original design, and also there's a story about how this is not an original, there it's a copy. Can you talk about that? Sure, it, this was an image of um, Abraham Lincoln from a painting called The Peacemakers done by George Healy. And he did a couple of other paintings to, uh, because that was kind of the, the represent, representational figure of that piece was Abraham Lincoln. And so he wanted to uh, go to a competition in Europe, made a copy for that, ex uh, that exposition or that competition, and then gave copies to Elihu Washburn, who was a friend of Lincoln's from Illinois, and also one to um, uh, Robert Lincoln, his son. So William Washburn, who was a brother of Elihu Washburn, acquired the painting from his brother. And then when this building was opened, the family, William Washburn's family, wanted to put that on display here. So now we had that painting on display for several decades. Well, then they wanted it back. And so it had become such an important part of the decoration of this building, of this room. So in 1937, they had uh, Edward Brewer, a local artist, make a copy of the original painting. And that's what we have here. So it's a reproduction of the original. And then eventually that original painting that was here for those 20 some years is now in the National Portrait Gallery in the Smithsonian. And I also understand that this depiction of Lincoln, his son Robert Todd Lincoln, felt that this was the best representation of his father. It was, yeah. And eventually the painting that he was given by George Healy, the artist, ended up in the White House. So it's in the White House dining so room. It's in the White House dining room by the fireplace, yeah. Let's talk about the speaker's chair, which uh, was designed by Cass Gilbert, fell into disrepair, came back. What's the significance of it? Yeah, it's, it's what was designed for this space for the Speaker of the House to have, and it's a very ornamental, very important seat because it has a star with La Toile Lenore, the, star, the state motto inscribed in the back and the top of that, that chair. And um, like all the furniture in the building, we still have a lot of the historical original furniture in the building, but people, you know, didn't always treat the, the furniture as well as they should. This one actually was in pretty good shape. And so it just, once again, kind of was out of date. Um, the swivel things were broken on it. And then when this chamber was restored in 1989, 
then we brought that chair back, had it restored, and has been back in the chamber since that time. Another element of the restoration was that the clock that was original to the chamber was found in a closet wrapped in newspaper, and now it's back resting where it belongs. But how, why was it hidden, and, and how was it found? Yeah, it was something that I think, you know, you had to wind it every day, so it was a maintenance issue. It seemed to be working fine when they unboxed it, and so there had to be some updates and some fixing to make it electrified. But really, that was an important part of the original design. Each chamber has a big marble face clock, and so that was from the house chamber taken down. They just had a regular clock you could plug in. And then when, when this was discovered, it was like, let's put it back because that's where it belongs. Uh, let's talk about the ceiling, the very, very beautiful ceiling. I understand it was, it was done by Elmer Garnsey. What are some of the symbols and important things to note about the ceiling? Yeah, it's, once again, it's an arabesque. So if you walk throughout the entire state capitol, you'll see these beautiful motifs that represent symbols of uh, kind of ancient Rome, but also the Renaissance period where you have festoons of products and things of Minnesota that are represented in the artwork. And that's the same thing you see here. You see a lot of M's for Minnesota. You see these elaborate motifs woven together that talk about the, the products of the state of Minnesota. And you'll see also uh, some symbols that really focus on instructing the people who work here. So there's one uh, painted stencil that has an hourglass with an owl on top and a star above its head that represents symbolically use your time wisely because you do have lim limited time to, to create the business for the state and the laws of the state. So you have to get your work done in a certain amount of time. Was this a part of Cass Gilbert's plan or is it just folklore that as the House of Representatives has the most representatives of the people that the speaker is looking towards the people? It, it can be a combination of both. Um, it is the largest chamber. It also fronts St. Paul because logistically, you know, if you're designing the building and you want to make it symmetrical, the chamber is so much larger than the Senate. So you couldn't put it on one side of the building. It would make the symmetry fail. So you put it on the, nor the north side, but also it is kind of symbolically you walk out the front of the chamber and then you see the doors to the city of St. Paul and the state of Minnesota. So a lot of people see that as the house is a little bit more of the people, more approachable in that sense of the, of the direction of the chamber. And that, and that could be a lot of that could just be folklore, or something that's kind of an, a neat thing to say because it is an important part of what happens in this building. It's about access to the people. So. And it's a good story. I, I don't want to negate it because it really does have a, a connection to the people who work here as well.